What's going on, Herd? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we got the Gauntlet Classic. And, well, what's it going to turn into? The Gauntlet Classic Custom? The Custom Gauntlet Classic. Needless to say, we're going to be bringing this thing into Benny's, and we are going to be testing the Does It Drift on this. No, I didn't go through the Does It Drift spiel. Ow. I really like the styling on this car. I think this and the Hellfire, they came out together. Great, great styling in-game. I love both these vehicles. It's very hard for me to... 815,000 these things. It's very hard for me to pay for these. Putting a burden on the damn bank account. Right off the bat, I don't know how I feel about the front end. How the rear end switch up? Not a whole lot. Really just kind of putting that front end on it for 815,000. All right, armor, not gonna do it. Brakes, not gonna do that either. Front bumper, what do we have for options? Wow, not a lot of options. Rear bumper, what do we got for a rear bumper? Painted, make it blend in. Not really a huge fan of this car so far. It's not gonna pay to make my car look worse. Let's figure out what kind of build we're gonna do with this thing. Let's check out the liveries. So what are we going for? Like a Dodge Daytona is what we're looking for here, right? With these, that's what I'm recognizing. So we got the, the big wang, right? Ooh, wicker bill. Yep, there it is. <laughs> I figured it was gonna be there. So, okay, so if I do keep it, that'll be the, the build I'm going for. Needless to say, we can't put a spoiler on there for an efficient drift test. Let's just build this thing up to basic drift standards and test it up. Obviously, max engine, we're gonna have to do turbo and transmission, suspension. How low can we go? That's the lowest, huh? We'll go with the street suspension, go right in the middle there. Transmission, already did those. Wheels, we we'll go with the revolvers on this build. I think I'm gonna do it blue as well. All right, we got to get out of here before I spend all my money. All right, it looks a lot better like that. A lot better like that. So all in all, I don't think it was worth the excessive amount of money that we spent on it. It's a very cool car, very unique, a cool addition. I'm not hating on that. Um, lots of upgrades, you know me. I love the, the excessive upgrades. The car is not so much my style, but again, that's not really what this is about in any way, shape, or form. The rear end looks nice. I like that livery. This is a nice looking vehicle when it all comes down to it. Definitely a show quality vehicle. Again, not what this video is about. Let's bring her to the track, shall we? Decided to take it to the old ocean road. It's been a while since I've been on this one. Uh, this is a tough one to stance on. So we're gonna actually do this one backwards to the way we did the last episode. And that's gonna be, let's try it out without shooting the hubs up and damaging it. I'm guessing that these vehicles are not gonna stance no matter what, but I'm gonna shut up and actually get a feel for this vehicle here. thing I noticed is that the speed boost does not last as long as most vehicles. It's actually a pretty short speed boost. It's, I guess it's not that it's a short speed boost, it's that you don't hook up like you would with some other vehicles. It's much more of a spin out. This thing's a burnout machine, that's really what it comes down to. I'm sure single gear it has all day. Let's try that out here. Eh, it's still a little bit long to be single gear. I'm definitely struggling in this car. I don't know if it's just because I'm definitely rusty in the drifting or if this car is just a little bit more difficult to be drifting. Single gear is not difficult. Of course, she's a burnout machine, but that speed boost a little bit tougher in this car. Doesn't like to re-engage. So it's got a lot of spin. It really wants to spin, which means when you're going at a higher rate of speed, you only have a small tolerance for air, basically is what I'm trying to say when you're going fast. If you oversteer, it's gonna spin out on you. Naturally, you don't wanna give it a lot of angle. However, like the last vehicle, the Beater Dukes, it does like, it, it's pretty good at, you know, like right there, we were going too slow and it was just so much power going to those wheels. They're just spinning away. Yeah, and it definitely has problems with re-engaging the, uh, the speed boost. Like, it, it doesn't like to do it twice in a row. Some vehicles are like this. This isn't new by any means. I just feel like this is much more of a muscle car, just meant to be a muscle car. And of course, there's no vehicle really in GTA that are meant to be drift cars. I guess you could beg the differ and argue that the Drift Tampa and the 
drift Yosemite are meant to be drift vehicles, but a lot of the drifters in the game would beg to differ that those are even drift vehicles. So it's a tough, tough community, guys. Tough community, tough crowd. Now, I know when you mess with the suspensions, you can mess with it and it will kind of mess with that speed boost slightly here and there. I'm not going to go through four different suspensions and test each one. That's going to take me way too long to do, but that's why I kind of went with the street suspension. Just enough taste of both sides. See if we can get this bad boy up here on the range. So far, so good. Let's damage up the hubs and well, the suspension more so. Now, we're not expecting to see a drop, just hoping not to see an explosion. Oh, I won a damn Penumbra FF at the casino last night. That's always fantastic. And I hit a straight flush and three card poker the other night. So, pretty fantastic luck is what I'm saying at the diamond lately. All right, let's get a little, a little feel for the single gear here first off. <laughs> There's more body roll, all right. I feel like I'm getting a pretty good feel for it. It's just not really my cup of tea. Could some people like this as a drift vehicle? Yeah, possibly, but this thing is just much more of a of a track, like a muscle car, straight up, like a bring it to the drag strip and take off, that kind of a thing. Is this a vehicle that you should be rushing out to get? Well, if you like it, definitely go rush out and get it. It is very expensive, so just keep in mind all the other things that you can get in this game for, you know, the million point seven you're probably going to be into it upwards of two million dollars by the end of it is it really worth it well i can't really answer if it's going to be worth it to you to buy this vehicle but as a drift vehicle i can give you my best uh, my best opinion so we're going to hit this thing in three separate aspects driftability efficiency as a drift vehicle and then the cost what are you getting out of it as a drift vehicle and uh, is it worth it compared to the rest of the field first off driftability first off i really didn't notice a huge difference uh, by damaging the suspension. There's a little bit of body roll, of course, but I really didn't notice anything with the amount of speed boost or the amount of traction or traction loss or any type of understeer or oversteer. There wasn't a huge difference. Um, a lot of body roll. That's all I really noticed. There might be slight, slight differences. Long story short, I'm not going to get too picky about that. When it comes down to it, the speed boost itself is tough to re-engage twice, which is a downfall if you're trying to make some of those longer corners. Also, it likes to just spin. So also when you're trying to make some of those longer corners, like right here, we're going to have to rely on some power slide right there. Now it doesn't like to re-engage twice. Oh, we got it, but we're not going to make it through the long corner. Could you get better at that over time and more practice in the car? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm positive of it. I don't give these cars more than about an hour of testing each, but an hour is plenty to get a good feel for it. I've been doing this since day one with all of these vehicles, so it kind of keeps them all on the same plane. Just kind of easily stated that way. Driftability on this thing, if you're buying this car, you're probably getting it because you like the car and it's a sweet muscle car. And In which case then, yeah, you can drift it but is this a vehicle that i'm really going to suggest you to go out and buy as a drift car not really guys there's there's just a lot better out there if, long story short just not really a drift vehicle in my opinion so on driftability i'm going to give this thing a six and a half yes it does drift but there's just so much better out there that's going to bring us into efficiency now efficiency on these new vehicles are a bit odd because we used to hit vehicles for not stancing up and well none of these new vehicles stance up so it's kind of one of those oddities now i'm not hitting them any longer for not stancing but I'm not, I'm not gonna give them any positive for not having to stance these vehicles. Long story short, the big aspect is gonna be a painful one with this thing. We kept it real clean, but we gotta damage it now. We gotta see how this thing handles damage.
Another thing is it's kind of a one wheel wonder, isn't it? It likes to do the one wheel wonder and unless you get that, uh, that, that extra angle on there, then she'll do it. One wheel wonder when you're not at that perfect angle, but it, it will bust them both loose. It's got a good posi system if you're going straight. I'm noticing no difference at all in the handling line, no difference at all in the body roll, no difference at all in the steering, no oversteer or understeer. No better, but no worse at all after the damage. So this is going to get a great uh, score for efficiency. There's just really nothing we can hit it on. Efficiency as a drift vehicle. If you are going to get this as a drift vehicle, you know, I'll, I'll hit it one point just for saying it's not the best drift vehicle, and that's about it. <laughs> so we'll go with a 9 on that. It's a 6.5 and, and a 9. So 15.5 and a half so far out of 20 available. That brings us into the cost. Now, the cost is just not going to get a great grade. It's just way too expensive. And for what it is as a drift car, if you're getting this thing as a drift car and you have to pay nearly two million bucks for it well you're really going to want a good drift vehicle for two million bucks or near it and well let's say that you don't you know put all of the fancy things on there and you just are going to get the uh, performance upgrades well you're still what was it 600 over 600,000 in for the gauntlet classic then you're at over 800,000 for the upgrade and then all of the uh, upgrades and bennies are, well, they're bennies upgrades. They're extremely expensive. If you don't, you're just talking about, I want my engine, my transmission, my turbo, and my suspension. I don't even care about paint or anything. Well, you're still, what, 1.5, 1 probably $1.6 million in. And as a drift vehicle, just not worth it. It's, it's a muscle car when it comes down to it at the end of the day. And I'm not saying muscle cars can't be drift cars. Can you drift it? You definitely can. But for this kind of money, I want something better. I'm gonna give it a four and a half in cost. So that's gonna bring us to 20 points. 20 out of 30 is not so hot in the Does It Drift series. Uh, only two thirds, that's, yeah, only 66%. Not the greatest at all, guys. But again, I didn't really expect a ton out of this. It's kind of why I built it in this way. I'm just gonna throw a spoiler on there, make that secondary, make it a white spoiler. And this is gonna be my, you know, Dodge Daytona. Needless to say, if you enjoy this series and you wanna see more, leave a like below, comment below. Let me know some of the vehicles you also wanna see, or maybe there's some of them that you've already tested and you know drift, but you wanna see my opinion on them. I know there are some vehicles that we've missed prior in the you know previous releases, we will definitely be going back and visiting some of those as we reach out in the future here, guys. I appreciate every single one of you tuning in, liking, commenting, and subscribing, sharing the videos. If you're sharing the videos, just doing whatever you're doing to support the channel, I greatly appreciate you, especially after taking breaks and, you know, all these little hiatuses that we've had from the channel. Just to still see the support that we get on Black Sheep TV to this day is pretty amazing. I appreciate every single one of you guys. As always, hope you all stay happy out there. Please stay positive, and we will definitely speak to you next time.